In a previous episode, we collected a whole bunch of iron ore from southern Utah, and now we're finally getting around to smelting it. This time, with a modified furnace that is supposed to have enough of a natural draft that we might not even have to use bellows. Of course, that is the theory. Then some ore. Trying to keep it equal by weight which means only about that much. Is it recording? Yeah. Okay. As you can see, the natural draft works quite nicely when it's we'll just a fire. We'll see how it contends with a foot and a half of charcoal and ore. Holy crap! Okay, so what are we dealing with here? So I was just bumping this thing because it seemed like the charcoal was stuck and it looks like we just pulled out a bloom. So I'm gonna pull out and out and whack it with a piece of wood. Alrighty. I need to run. Actually, I think this is my whacking log. This certainly looks like a bloom. Boom! Skabams! Kapow! Whammy! Now where's my rock? My stick though. If we really pull that bloom out of that much ore, I'm gonna just... First I'm going to be disgusted, and then I'm going to be amazed and so pleased. I think it's still conglomerating, but it, that looks like a little piece of bloom. Should pull it out and take a look at it? Yeah. That sounds like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Unfortunately, it appears that what it actually was, was some fused together ore that had not yet reduced into iron. Okay, so we've loaded in the last batch of ore. It's burning its way down. I've blocked one airport. We're relying solely on the other. And now I'm just waiting for this thing to burn and hopefully consolidate what I hope is a bloom. Please. Why do we keep doing this, you may ask? Because we're just so interested in doing it, I guess. Through competition, we discover ourselves, right? And we just compete with the elements because we got a lot of discovering to do. So, uh... So have we already pokey-pokeyed inside to see if we can find a bloom? Um, I keep finding lumps of former ore. We'll see if the former ore has become a bloom. Let me grab some bamboo, too. I've thrown some wood in to get some... to keep the draft going, but I'm going to for a minute and start doing some of this. So here's the interesting thing to me is we definitely should be finding something because we pulled a fragment out earlier that was a bunch of little bits of ore that had melted together. Yes. And so... We, Would you look at oh. that? What's that? It's part of the ore drain. What's, what's that little guy there? Hello. What are you? He likes commitment, that's what it is. Oh my gosh, something's heavy. 
one of these good. Ceteris Paribus. Heavy isn't proof of, of success, but heavy is good. Oh, that's another chunk of ore. Okay. I put some in yesterday to roast. Oh, really? Evidently, I didn't take it out. So now we know what happens when ore gets left in the furnace. Okay, so my question is, where's our melty melty? In as many words, yes. Okay. Those are all technical terms, by the way. You're welcome. If we, uh, I'm so grateful. Uh, no, no, that's, that's what they used to call a blurb back in the day, is a melty melty. You know, originally, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> Although, melty melty might have sounded like... <laughs> so, I'm also really pleased by that drain. In principle, that drain seems to have just worked beautifully. I mean, it didn't have much to drain, but it seems to have fulfilled the function of a drain, which is... To keep it from causing problems. Although maybe problems are evidence that something's actually happening. In which case, it's a bigger problem not to have problems. Well, one thing is I do not believe for one moment that that ore was not. Well, we know it's good. I, I, I will believe many things. I will not believe that that ore was not. It's still no bloom. I can't imagine it wasn't hot enough. I can imagine it wasn't exposed to heat for a long enough period of time. You know, Joseph, maybe the lesson we learned is that the furnace really does need to be taller because you need a draft that is strong enough to pull it through like three feet of, of ore and charcoal. That sounds That's one possibility. reasonable. Uh, look along the walls of the furnace. I think it may have just stuck on there. Particularly right above the air inlets. Hold on. You know, there kind of does something to be, be something crusting around the edge. There's something <laughs> crusting around the edge. That oh, looks like the bloom. Okay. Don't die. Too late. <laughs> You're still Just because I'm breathing doesn't mean I'm not dead. <laughs> Anything interesting falling down? Uh, not yet. Okay. Actually, you ought to come look at this. You might be interested by this, Joseph. Does it look good? It, well, it looks like there's a bunch of sparkly goop stuck to the wall. Spar I like sparkly goop, so if you'll observe carefully in there, I will poke it and it will go sparkly. So there's a possibility that that's the bloom. I uh, mean, are you, are you melting your shoes? Probably. Um, there's also a possibility that it's just uh, like semi-molten clay, right? Like that seems like a possibility as well. It's hard to tell. But anyway, so everything I see falling down is clay so far. You know, one thing I want to do is to go through this with a magnet and see how much ore gets pulled out. This resident here? That would tell us a thing about whether or not the ore, like, disappeared into the ether, or if the ore just didn't get reduced. And if it didn't get reduced, then we start saying things like, needs a higher temperature, needs a longer time, or needs more carbon, carbon monoxide, or some combination of the above. Yep. So things I'm thinking. Sure. So one of the interesting things about this, one of the things that we've talked about in regards to this is that we know the chemical reaction that is supposed to take place. Yep. Iron ore reduction is fairly simple. Carbon monoxide plus heat over a sustained period of time with the ore rips off the oxygen. Boom. You've got iron. So on the one hand, that makes it very frustrating when it doesn't work <laughs> because it seems like it should work. Yeah. But on the other hand, it gives us some clues because what we in theory know is that if we didn't get that to work, then, well, there's only a few places where it can have gone wrong, right? Just a few variables. Either, either we didn't have ore, right, or else we didn't put it in a high enough heat, or else we didn't do it for a long enough period of time, or else there's not enough carbon monoxide. 
Carbon monoxide is probably not it, given the charcoal. Um, airflow is huge for getting the temperature. Uh, that, that's been major. Basically what we're thinking is, we know that the ore is good. This is professional quality. I, I agree. That's, that's my hypothesis ore. too. We know the charcoal is good, which means the remaining factors are temperature, which is airflow, and furnace design, which also influences the airflow. And so what wait, we're wait, thinking wait, of doing... Wait, hang on, hang on, back up just a second. So, sure. Or... Um, shoot, what was it? Or charcoal temperature. Wait, wait, not, not charcoal. It's, it's or, or carbon monoxide temperature time, right? Sure. Is that a good breakdown? And the charcoal is what provides the carbon monoxide, so that's probably not the okay, condition. Okay, so, or car charcoal meaning carbon monoxide supply, yep. time and temperature. And so we're hypothesizing that the temperature was okay. We got it to orange heat. Uh, Question mark? I don't think it was sustained enough. I so think it's we the time. Need, I think we need more time at that heat and more consistency at that heat. Um, and to get that time, we would want to pile our layers higher. Question mark. We need it, more air. it needs to run down. Yeah, and well, concomitantly with that, you need more air, right, to, to, to keep the temperature up. But like to get more time, it has to move down through the furnace through a longer period of time, correct? Is that a theory or no? I, I think the, the bigger problem was that the temperature being at the right height was only for intermittent, intermittent periods. So it was hot enough and then not, and then there, we're constantly cooling up and down to that level, not above it. And I think we need to hit that temperature a little bit more stably, and that means the airflow needs to be constant, and it needs to be more intense. Which ends up looking like, for us, assuming that we're not going to use a bells or an electric fan, what that ends up looking like is a taller furnace, Yep. which means a longer chimney and greater draw through the air inlets at the bottom. I think you're correct. I think that's what we need to do. I think this thing needs to be 50% or more, again, taller. And so we if, need to... if it was nine in the morning again, we were doing this again. Mm -hmm. This thing is now this tall. Yeah, about like roughly. that. Okay, and then, and then we put more air inlets in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and you mentioned, you know, we we'd want to reinforce this oh, thing yes. all around quite a bit more, right? If it, parts of this are like three or four inches thick, right? Like this is yeah. no joke, right? Um, but we just want to make sure that it has enough of a base that we're not going to tilt over and would rain be very unfortunate. Awfulness <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Literal so, doom. One thing that strikes me about this particular smelt is that it was your response to it. You said that even though it's a failure, it doesn't feel disappointing. You're just curious, and that's really uh, cool. I'm a little disappointed, but I am. I, no, I really am mostly curious, right? Because mostly because this is unquestionably the best ore we've had, right? Yep. And so we're just slowly knocking out variables, right? And we're doing a lot of experimentation, but we're slowly knocking out variables to figure out how to get that reduction process to go right. Yep. And so yeah, like I am, I am. That was that was exactly my reaction. Is okay. So what went wrong? And also, it's interesting because this is a very different result than we've gotten in the past. You know, in the past we've had uh, smelts that have produced a ton of slag. We've had smelts that have produced very little slag, very runny slag, very thick slag, big blooms, small blooms, relatively good blooms, relatively blooms slaggy as your blooms. Head. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. This is as big as your head. Yeah, absolutely, right? And so and so, what? it's actually very interesting to me to kind of come out of this and say, wait, wait, wait no lava, no bloom. What happened? Yeah. yeah. And, and it makes me think that, you know, here's at least one lesson that we could pass on to our YouTube viewers in case you're doing any kind of smut like this, is that there, you really do need a bigger fire. You know, like one of the things we tried to do this time is to keep the level of the fire very low down in the furnace, right? Not to fill it up all the way to So that we could low. get the chimney effect above it. And I want to say that um, that that was probably that that doesn't work. <laughs> you need a bigger fire, I think, is one of the things we've learned. Well, here. I think it could work if you had more airflow. I mean, even at the yeah. shallower depth, because I've seen smelts work where they were only about this deep. So you think maybe if we had four holes in the bottom instead of two? Well, well yeah, that was the other thing. Is yeah. when we were talking with Hans in the Netherlands, you know, he his furnaces were only a foot and a half high. Yeah. Right. Although he mentioned he was um, that for at least some of those smelts he used an electric fan. Yeah. That was a little ways away. It's and with an electric matter. fan, like you've got all the air you need. You can get away. You've with got everything. all the air you need. In that case, right. it's all about reducing the amount of air so that you don't don't blow the ore out of the top. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe with the so we definitely need those two extra air holes. But maybe with those four air holes and a taller chimney, we could uh, you know fill it up to here. Yep. Right. And still get draw. Yep. And then and have a, a really the, deep the red of holes. temperature. This is really cool. Basically, we failed again. But surprise, surprise. 
but there's some hope behind it because we're seeing a pattern through them and I mean it's just a matter of time before we make this thing work. We still have, what, 200 pounds of ore? And I think if we're able to recover the stuff from this smelt, then we should be able to do it again. We've got a furnace. This is definitely reusable. Yep, definitely reusable. And I mean, we've got knowledge that's reusable. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the knowledge is the most valuable thing, right? Yeah. Because we can dig up as much mud as we want here, and we can go back down to Cedar City and collect as much ore as we want. Uh, that doesn't help us until we figure out what we're doing, what questions we're dealing with, and what those what the answers to those questions are. And the draw this. As far as furnace design goes, this thing definitely works. Um, even with the fire long dead, the, the heat in the chamber is still drawing air up. I could feel an air current coming out of the top. And so it is pulling air in this way. Uh, smoke is being sucked into the chamber. So it works, it just needs to work more. Yeah. Well, and so this was this was one of the things, right, is that, uh, you know, at, at least as I was envisioning this furnace, I was like, well, if you've got draw, you know, if you have that chimney effect, then, well, you have the chimney effect, you're done, right? And the, the the answer seems to be, well, you know, there's the chimney effect and then there's the chimney effect, right? Yep. Like we've got a very low grade chimney effect here going. And what we need is more like a rocket stove chimney <laughs> effect, you know? Yep. It needs to draw in air like a hurricane. We learned a lot. We're going to do it again. The upshot of this whole thing is we're eliminating variables and we're figuring this thing out. We will make a hammer and anvil and tongs without a hammer and anvil and tongs. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see what happens next, please hit the like button and subscribe below. And if you want to take it to the next level, ring the bell. If you want to see more of our other smelting adventures, we have prepared a playlist here that you can enjoy. Thank you very much.